Hello, Jungle Weavers. This is Asgardian, welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 25 with the St. Louis Browns. In our previous episode, we actually did better than we ever have since our initial playoff appearance. Uh, we only finished five games out of first place, which is pretty impressive since we haven't had a major injection of talent in quite some time, which is also the good. Um, we do have some reasonably talented young players, but they're also pretty far away from being major league quality. Although some of them are, are quite good indeed. Yeah. Let us immediately hire a new team trainer. I think that's going to be our first objective here. Rags Faircloth, what a name. What a glorious name. Um, being able to rehab quickly is really, really nice, but I don't like how bad we are preventing arm injuries. This is challenging. I think it's going to be Danny Astorga. I think he's the best choice for us. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, next up we have our player development workshop. The practice facility, as some might call it. Practice facility. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, Pat. Why is Pat Siri learning a new position? Oh, because I want to try to learn first base. That's right. That is accurate. I also want to train up Whitey Lockman a bit. The question is, what do I want him to learn? I want him to learn defense as well. I need him to be the best version of himself that he can be. Let's check out some prospects. Carl Sawatsky is not going to be a catcher, but he could be a decent shortstop. Let's have him start working on his plate discipline. Actually, let's go for quality of contact. I think it's actually more valuable. Um, Vic Wirtz also needs to work on plate discipline. Dale Long probably needs to work on defense. You are not a shortstop. I don't know what possesses you to think that you are, even for one second, but you are not a shortstop. Uh, we'll make you a left fielder, I guess. There you go. Work on your quality contact as well. Let's, if we're going to do this, let's go crazy. And then Ralph Branca, I desperately need you to improve your control. Here's all that sorted. I have a fair bit of cash left, so let's immediately start putting money into player development. Let's put 50 grand into it. Um, I still have plenty of money to potentially add more players. Let's check on free agency. We'll do our little player search here. All leagues, 50 potential. Let's go. A lot of people have already been selected. Bob Feller as a giant just feels gross to me. I don't know how I feel about that. No interesting pitchers available, duly noted. What about hitters? Nothing here either, which is disappointing. I mean, there is Harry Simpson. You know what? I just need more talented players. I think Harry Simpson is a perfectly valid addition to our club for 14 grand. Could you try to make fucking Harry Simpson into a pitcher again? Is that what we're fucking doing here? Where's the new guy?
I am going to start murdering this game for deciding, hey, what if we made him a fucking second base and just stop? He's an outfielder and only an outfielder. Well, I guess he's a left fielder. He's not really a right fielder. Okay. Why are there two Harry Simpsons? Oh, wait, what? What? He's 59 years old. How is he playing? What? Oh my god, he legitimately did play in real life at the age of 59. That's incredible. That's pretty bonkers. Maybe the most bonkers. Oh, we definitely need to get some more position players, that's a certainty. Mm-hmm. We'll have Vernon Stevens back soon enough. That's our third baseman. Okay. Um, do we have any youngsters that are ready for a bigger role on the club? Maybe Ralph Branca eventually. Edward McKay is a little bit more polished right now. Um, but hopefully the draft has something to offer us of high quality, because we could use it, certainly. Uh, yes, quite right, quite right. Everyone gets reactivated. Johnny Pesky is only ever going to play second base. You need to stop this nonsense of trying to make him do a shortstop. It'll probably be... Oh, Skeeter Newsom just got a whole lot worse at defense. That's a real shame, because he actually had a really good year for us. Um, but alas. I mean, maybe it's possible he gets better, but I wouldn't count on it. I think it's going to be Philip Corrigan is going to be our shortstop next year. Um, that seems like a pretty fair bet. A Pat Surrey who can play for his face would be so incredible. I hope that that's the position they teach him. I could just say, look, no, we're going to teach him fucking shortstop. Like, please don't, game. Don't do that to me. We're bros, you and I, game. We're the best of friends. Nice. A gold glove for Whitey Lockman. That sounds pretty damn good for your... And Buddy Rosar. But mostly Whitey Lockman. Uh, that's his second full season. He's got a decent chance to get some down ballot uh, MVP votes. At the tender age, by the way, of 19 years old. And I don't think he's going to be... I don't think he's going to hit 20 until after the season has already begun, which is pretty wild. That is some good stuff. All right, friends, we will take a look at the emails in just a second. I will be back shortly. Let's see. Any other awards for the men from St. Louis? Um, Tommy Bridges goes out with a bang with, as the best reliever in the league. Nice. And a silver slugger for Whitey Lockman. An excellent season by all accounts. I wonder how he did in the MVP voting. Um, let's find out. I have to think he at least finished um, fifth or higher, but I'm not convinced. He was sixth. Um, Stan Spence is actually fourth. Nice. Very nice. Um, cool. Uh, I finished reading, again, one of my favorite all-time baseball books. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Um, Vec is in Rec. Um, Bill Vec was one of the guys, had a fascinating story. Um, his father was president of the Chicago Cubs um, in the early 20th century. And then when he grew up, he started owning sports teams. One of them, New York City, to my heart, is the 1948 Cleveland Indians that won the World Series, the last time that a Cleveland 
baseball team that won the World Series. But he also owned the St. Louis Browns. Um, and he endeavored to make them the best team in St. Louis uh, by just endlessly twitting the Cardinals at every opportunity. It's a really funny book. Highly recommend it. Um, Zach is in Rack. That's V-E-E-C-K as in Rack. Um, it's a wonderful book. I love it to death. And I highly recommend it. But it just reminded me that we were playing as the Browns. Um, let's see here. Luke Appling, definitely. I think he is worthy of an award. Tommy Bridges will cast a vote for him. I'm going to keep voting for Max Bishop, but I think I think he's due. I don't think he's going to be very successful in his endeavors. Chapman, yes. Kiki Coiler, yes. Bill Decky, yes. Tony Lazari, yes. Joe Sewell, yes. I will for Bill Terry, and I'm going to toss my last vote to Satchel Page. Even though I don't think he has a snowball's chance in hell at actually making it, but it would be cool if he could do that. He got Rookie of the Year award. Did he really? When he pitched for me? I guess he did. Zam. Um, Zam. I think Appling's got a pretty good chance to make it. I think Kiki Collier or Coiler has a pretty good chance of making it. Beyond that, I think Bill Dickey's got a really, really good chance at it. Just because we take a look at how he compares to the average catcher, he's actually pretty well set. So let's submit our ballots and see what might transpire. And let me quickly remember to fix my scouting. I'm really hopeful this is a bountiful draft for us. I think we desperately need one. Desperately. If we're going to continue to compete at the highest level. Yeah. Thirsty. Um... What? Huh? Third base. Third base. I'm here to give it a shot, but I that is not what I expected in the slightest. Um we teach Pat Siri about other things as well? We can do. Um, let's get him working on his quality of contact, and we need to get somebody else training up. Weddy Lockman, go ahead and work on your... What strength of conditioning do? Does that increase power? Oh, it increases... It reduces injury. Okay. Let's get some plate discipline in him. Just make him even better at baseball. All three of you are struggling mightily. That makes me sad. It causes me discomfort. Ty Kluszewski would be an awfully tasty piece to our team, but I don't think he's going to be around by the time that I get to draft. Using OSA scouting, you know better game. If Ricardo Torres likes him, then I like him too. Oh dear. This is a shitty, shitty draft. <clears throat> There's some okay players here, but they are far, far, far below the talent level I was hoping for. That makes me sad. Hmm.
Sam Mealy is a very fine hitter who doesn't really have a position. Let me keep looking. I do want a hitter. I'm certain of that. Let's look at hitters. I wish Steve Bilko had a little bit better contact. That does concern me. But he is definitely a worthy choice. Uh, Billy Klaus is a terrible second baseman. I don't want a bad defender if we can avoid it. Dick Krihoski is acceptable, but hardly great. I feel like Jerry Vito would be a terrible choice of a first round pick. Paul Lehner is pretty solid, actually. I could see maybe picking him up. But I just like Bilko better. Bilko can play in the outfield or at first base, and he's got a lot of potential here. He's pretty raw, but raw is basically what we're going to be stuck with. Let's go ahead and draft him. Let's, let's bring him along. Done. One moment. Oh my, that was a big sneeze. Um, Billy Klaus? I think Jerry Vita is actually not a terrible pick in the second round. I think we can do this. Because he might actually play right now. Um, he might actually be starting on day one. Let's see what is left in this draft class. We've got a couple of relief pitchers that seem to be noteworthy. Mm, maybe. I'll take fall player frames. I think he's actually a pretty solid pitcher. Even if I don't love his skill set, I think he's still good enough to be a worthwhile third round pick. Uh, I will offer you the slot. There's a lot to like about Billy Klaus. If he was just a competent defender, I think he'd go very far. I am willing to draft him and meet his demand just because I have quite a bit of money. And if I can turn him into something special, then it'll be worth every penny. Uh, Ralph Lapointe is a terrible infielder. I like John Jocelyn a lot, actually. I think he's a pretty decent choice. We'll do that. I will offer you the slot. Just don't be a dirty slot. Um, do you have any secret megastar hitters that are unfortunately cast as pitchers? We have one-ish in Danny O'Connell. But Danny O'Connell is a terrible defender. Like, under every circumstance, I don't think he fits. Russ Rose is a far better choice. Let's get Russ Rose. Russ, as he likes to be called. And we're already at the point where the really good players are just gone.
Bob Thorpe is actually a really good pick. I don't think he's got much going for him as a pitcher, but he's got enough bat to support what looks like a pretty strong glove in the outfield. I think Mr. Thorpe is a fine addition to our team, and I will happily pay him the zero dollars that he requests. Uh, are there any big stuff pitchers? There are some. I'm going to draft Phil Hogstaff. Good old Phil, as he likes to be called. Um, and I'll also grab Dick Ketcher. And then I think we just... I'm not dropping 181 rounds. That's, that's insane even for me. I can't do that. I will pay him twenty twenty thousand dollars. I think it is because they don't have anything better to spend my money on right now. I think adding a player with his offensive talent and hoping he finds a position at some point is pretty beneficial to us. I think it's actually a really helpful thing to have. Any rule file dual players that I care about? No. All of mine could go take a giant fucking walk, and I would not give even one tenth of a shit. Um. What do I want? What is my heart's fondest desire at this point? I could use some depth in the rotation. I've got a really great squad of starters, but they're all fairly old. Adding in a good young pitcher would pay a lot of dividends for us. So the question is, do we take someone like Clint Hartung, who's not finished growing yet, but might have some pretty nice upside to him? His name is Floppy, which is a name. Forrest Fitz is already established, like, but I don't think he's got the raw upside. And what about Johnny Hecke? No, Johnny Hecke is not interesting. Let's go for Clint Hartung. Let's let's add him to the club. Drafted. Chuck Deering is actually a pretty solid uh, outfielder. We're really going to play Sid Gordon in left field. I mean, all right, but that's not what I'm looking for either. Um... Let me go ahead and draft Chuck Deering. I like Sheldon Jones a lot. Uh, we're going to draft Sheldon Jones as well on the Rule 5. Done. And I think that's good enough. I think three Rule Fivers is pretty good. All right, let us sim on down to the preseason start. I don't know why they taught him third base. I wish I had taught him first base, because I think that's where he's going to be playing. Because I need Pat series. Oh, Ben Chapman made the Hall of Fame. Nice. Um, We need Pat series bat in the lineup if we're going to have any kind of power threat. And I think first base is the most natural place to play him. I 
I think that's the right call. I think just force Pat Surrey to play for his face, and then he'll figure it out or he won't. You raise my budget, which is glorious, but doesn't really help me. Did I draft Ben Chapman? No, I didn't. I already had Ben Chapman when I started. With the Boston Braves. Boston. Ah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, broke the scouting again. Please stop, game. Cease. Um, any other interesting emails? I don't think so. I mean, all my draft picks signed their contract, which is pretty solid. How bad could Pat Siri be as a first baseman? Truly, how bad could he be? He's not a completely hopeless infielder, so I think playing him for his face does us a lot of good. I think Skeeter Newsom has probably ended his career with us because the only position he can't embarrass himself at is second. So let me try to flip you real fast for a prospect of some flavor. I will take any position as long as it is a quality player. I could bring Bucky Walters back, which seems pretty silly. I just don't think it's very sensible. I don't think it's worthwhile putting that much emphasis on a player that's that old. And Doc Dennis isn't very good. Um, I could just release Skeeter Newsome and save myself some money if I need to, so I think we shall wait and hope for perhaps a better, a better deal later on down the line. Uh, Joe Tepsik has been drafted into the army. Uh, good luck, Joe. I hope you have a successful tour. Sprong training. Ralph Bronca has developed enough to at least deserve a shot. Fury Witta. He can all be called up and give him some shots. In return. Harry Simpson can hang out in spring training. I think Jim Greengrass is going to convert to being an outfielder full time. I think his days of pitching are just done. He's just not a very good pitcher. Like, he's getting destroyed as a pitcher. So I'm going to set your game strategy. Okay, you're already set to be an outfielder. Good. Um, I have so many fucking minor leaguers, you have no idea. I have 41 players on the spring training roster. I think that's good enough to give a lot of people a lot of reps. Um, I know you're not benching Pat Siri to play Hank Sauer. No, Pat Siri is playing every fucking day at first base. Try again, game. And quit turning him from anything other than first base. You will learn from first base or die trying. That is your objective. Uh, play him at first base. Don't even think about playing him anywhere else. And then I want Whitey Lockman in center. I want him playing in center field. I guess Dan Spence is marginally better in center for the moment. That's interesting. A guy who was a Globe Glove center fielder last year, all of a sudden is just kind of mad center field. 
Oh god, he was terrible in center field his rookie year. Wow. That's pretty bonkers. Um, this is all fine. I mean, Ralph Franck as an ultra reliever is a decent way to at least get him some innings against major league competition, but it's not what I want him to do. A personal message. You've improved your quality of contact. Nobody else got any better. Philip Corrigan leading the Browns in home runs is not a sentence I expected to be saying at any point in Major League Baseball history, but okay, I guess. Wow, buddy. <sighs> Fine. I think he's done. I genuinely think a guy with two serious arm injuries and back-to-back -back seasons, I think he's just done. Uh, but maybe I will hold out some faint hope that he can form a little bit better. I don't want out Hollingsworth, though, is the problem. I think that's a terrible deal. Especially a guy coming right off of a torn rotator cuff. I'm not going to give you genuinely good players for that. That just seems like a pretty silly decision. All right. We've completed all the games. Um, Clyde Passa will not be back for another few weeks, so let's place him on the I.L. Anybody else showing up as red? No. Okay. Has Pat Surrey learned first base at all? He has learned it a little bit. I think it's good enough to give him a first base shot this year. Um. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start wheedling things down. I have 17 pitchers. I would ideally like 12. Probably 11, but I would settle for 12. Kellner to the minors. McKay to the minors. Moro to the minors and Olsen to the minors. At least with 13 pitchers, I think Bob Klinger is going to go. I'm sorry, the fans. I don't know if the fans apparently loved him, but yeah, he sucks. As brings out of 12 pitchers, which I think is a good number. Dizzy Trout is our ace. Nels Potter is definitely our number two. Then we go left witch and row. And our fifth starter is going to be Ralph Franca. I have no incentive to let him relieve when I desperately need a quality starting pitcher. I somebody else can come up with a rubber arm and be worthy of our team. Which means we can put Ken Chasen as our stopper, which I think is his best role. Jim Lamarck is going to help us with our lefty problems. Ooh, 
who are the two youngsters I picked up that have a good bit of potential but don't have very much practice yet? Um, Sheldon Jones is going to be an emergency starter long reliever. Uh, Clint Hartung is going to be middle reliever, and we're going to... That's fine. And then Bill Ricks is going to be middle reliever. Didn't Bill Ricks start last year? No, he was a reliever last year. Okay. All right, so that's the pitching dealt with. I now need to get down to 13 position players. I do not need third. I do not need three catchers. That is too many catchers. So Cliff Mapes goes back to the minors. Vita to the minors. Jimmy Ford has nothing left to offer. If he won't take a demotion, we'll cut him. Okay, he took a demotion. Smart man. Sherry Robertson is a maybe. We can come back. Skeeter Newsom is just done. Actually, he did recover his some of his defense a little bit. He's actually probably saved his job. We'll send out Philip Poor again, because I think Dick Collar is going to be our opening day shortstop here. Uh, Stan Rojak goes to the minors. Far, far too many outfielders. Harry Simpson to the minors. George Stoller to the unemployment line. I'm not even going to keep him on the roster. He's that uninteresting as a player. I feel like Bob Johnson needs to shift back to left field. And we go with we maybe go with, because I really want Spence playing in center field, but if he's our best center fielder, then Whitey Lockton could shift over to right, and we could play Bob Johnson in left. Because I think keeping Hank Sauer, just because I think keeping Hank Sauer is kind of foolish when he hasn't really played at that high of a level in the minor majors. I'm going to send him to the minors. I'm going to shift Whitey Lockman over to right, and we're going to play um, Bob Johnson in left field. I still think that's the best use for him for the moment. But he goes just play Irv Dusak in left field and let Bob Johnson like relax a little bit. Or Sid Gordon could play left field as well. He's a pretty talented outfielder. I have choices is what matters. I think Chuck Deary goes back to his home team. I could just release Bob Johnson or try to trade him again. I feel like keeping a 40-year-old at any level is malpractice at this point. But I don't want to mistreat him either, because he actually has been a mainstay of these St. Louis Browns. He's actually been really productive. Uh, I have so many players I want to give auditions to. Bob Johnson, this one is just blocking people's spots. I could just demote Sherry Robertson and just keep Bob Johnson as an elder statesman who gets the occasional at bat. I think I'm going to do that instead. That feels reasonable, like a reasonable choice a reasonable person would make. All right, let's get the lineups all set. Burp. Johnny Pesky definitely leads off. I don't think there's any disputing that. I think Dick Collier is a pretty good choice to bat second. I think he's got enough on base skills and enough contact that he should be able... Yeah, but maybe not, though. Here's the issue. A lot of his supposedly great contact is actually just not striking out. That's not good enough for our second hitter. 
I don't want to bat Sid Gordon second because I like to bat him a little bit lower in the lineup. I think Whitey Lockham would be a perfect choice to be our number two hitter. Stan Spence happily slides in and pitches third. Uh, who bats cleanup? Siri's the best power hitter that I've got. My concern is... No, it's Bryn Stevens. I need somebody who's a little bit more experienced hitting cleanup. And then Pat Siri can hit fifth. Pat Siri's kind of the opposite of Dick Color. Like, he looks like he's actually a bad hitter, but he's actually not that bad. Because you look, his bad hit is okay. You're just going to strike out a lot. If he's hitting, you know, plenty of dongs, I don't care. And as long as he's drawing walks and hitting dongs, I'm a happy man. Um, all right. So I need my left fielder who's going to be Sid Gordon, and he's going to bat fifth or sixth. I know how numbers work. No, I don't. Um, so I've got to play a shortstop, and I've got to play a catcher. Buddy Rosar, I think, is a perfect choice to hit seventh. And Dick Collar can hit eighth and play shortstop. And then we're going to regenerate the depth chart. If you want Pat Siri to cycle to give us some reps in left field, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this arrangement. I don't know that I necessarily want Bob Johnson playing that often, but he's not terrible at it. So I'm willing to let him play there as well. So his idea is going to be that Pat Siri is going to mean a lot of every day. And then Bob Johnson, uh, and also gives Sid Gordon a break because he hasn't played a lot of left field. I'm perfectly fine with this particular depth chart. I'm willing to give it a try anyway. Sid Gordon. Um, yeah, let's let's play some baseball. Oh, before we do that, I need to make sure, did I add any rookies to the 40-man that needed to be added? Which I think is literally just Ralph Bronco. Every time I hear the name of Ralph Bronco, by the way, I think of Ogren's wife from uh, Dragon Age Origins. Maybe most of you don't know who I'm talking about, but that's who I think of every single time. And yes, I know Ralph Bronco is an incredible pitcher um, in real life, but that's why I think whenever I heard the word Bronco. Top 100 prospects. Uh, the number seven minor league system, um, which is not bad. It's good work if you can get it. Who is my best prospect? Let's check out the prospect pipe one. All teams, St. Louis Brown. Wurtz is the number 11 prospect, then Bronco, then Long, then Sawatsky, and then it's a pretty big gap between Sawatsky and Bilko. Is Vic Wurtz really ready for the major leagues? Question mark. Game. Oh, he's in AAA, which is... Wait, what? Oh, the American Association. Got it. Where is Vic Wurtz? Where did he go? Was he eaten by a grew? No, seriously, where is Vic Words? Where did you go? Oh, you're in double A this year. Okay. Double A means the American Association. Got it. Yeah, Vic Words could be really, really good. I need him to have a good quality season, but he is. Looking pretty sweet. Um, yeah. 
Shall we baseball, darling? Yeah, the Tigers just kicked the shit out of us in the opening series. Okay. Nice. Two weeks for Max Manning on an undisclosed injury. Did you, like, get your dick caught in a window? Oh, off-field incident. You were arm wrestling at a local bar. Oh, my God. I'm sure you could be stupider somehow, but that's pretty world-class stupid. I'll be real with you. Um, Alex Kellner is fun, I guess. I guess we could give him a brief audition in the major leagues, but not as a starter, but as a reliever. Our pitching is off to a rough start, but it is so early that I'm not remotely concerned yet. Ball player frames is developing very nicely. Nice. Um, it is not lost in the Pat series just got worse in most conceivable ways, but I don't even give a shit. He's off to a great start. Of his 12 hits, half of them have been for extra bases. That's what you'd love to see. That is what we call good baseballing. We can have Claude Passo back, which I think we would very much like to have. Who does he replace, though? Maybe John Lefkowitz? Let's send John Lefkowitz to the minors. He can work on improving a little bit, and we'll give Claude Passo his rotation slot back. Aha, uh -huh, you got frouded. Maybe. Question mark. There you go. Max Manning can return. Uh, Bob, I need you to stop complaining immediately. You're actually pitting quite poorly, despite getting fairly regular playing time, so you need to stop whining. I will fucking cut your ass so fast your head will spin. Don't think I won't. 15. I am the captain. All right, how are we doing? Ralph Bronca is getting really good. That's a nice thing. Some youngsters are improving in the minors, but nothing too wild. Like, nobody currently is like, I must start this player now. We've reached that level where he is critical to our success. Um, Vic Wirtz is getting there. If he keeps developing, I think he's got a really good chance to push for playing time in the very, very near future. Um, are you one of these guys that I control where he plays? Yes, I think that is accurate. I think Vic Wirtz is one of those dudes. Let's send him to triple A, one of the triple A teams. There you go. Nice. 
Um, we don't have a ton of at-bats for people. Let's see how everyone's doing. Our offense is actually really good. It's actually been a rotation that's let us down a little bit. Um... Whitey Lockman hopefully can turn it on a little bit here in the second half as we approach the second half because I think there's a lot more he has to give. Spence and Pesky have been great. Vern Stevens could be a little bit better, but I'm certainly not complaining for a guy that barely played last year. Um, he is driving the ball with authority, and I am happy with that. Pat Siri could be better. I'm not going to give up on him yet, but I do want to see him start hitting the ball a little bit harder with a little bit more authority as the season progresses. Sid Gordon has... I don't know how you could... No, that's why, because your, your whole contact count is I don't strike out. You also don't put the ball in play either. I think Sid Gordon is our first official casualty of the season. Sid, thank you for your service, but you're going to the minor leagues. Um, fuck it, Vic Wirtz. It's your time, my guy. You're playing left field now for us every single day. Let's fucking go. Uh, left field, please. And not because I control this roster, I don't have to necessarily have him force to start a new position. I'm going to do the same thing for Vern Stevens and Pat Siri. Uh, Vern Stevens especially. Maybe Pat Siri we keep like that. but Alright. That should instantly potentially transform this lineup. If Vic Wirtz plays anywhere near what his actual talent level suggests... He's a middle of the yard thumper that's just in waiting for an opportunity. Okay, that's that part is done. Who else is struggling this year? Dick Color is actually a very effective hitter, which I did not expect, but I welcome. Uh, I welcome that quite a bit. Is he short stopping with reasonable skill? Yes, he is. Brilliant. Buddy Rosar is starting to slip at this point. He's an offensive zero, essentially. Is Clyde Klutz ready to be our starting catcher? I don't think that he is. I think maybe just letting Klutz start a bit more frequently would be what the doctor ordered. Uh, Siri, you're no longer playing in left field. You're only going to play in for at first, and I'm also going to stop playing Bob Johnson. I kind of feel like we're doing him a little bit dirty, but Bob Johnson is just not what this team needs anymore. He's a little bit too old, and he lacks the athleticism that we really need to be an excellent team. Are you fucking kidding me? I was about to talk about how great a story of Ralph Bronco was, and he blows out his rotator cuff. Sigh. Um, I guess that means John Leftwich comes back. Maybe he's learned how to pitch better. His brief stay in the minor leagues, we'll see. The A's are off to a fantastic start this year. Um, we might be literally playing for second place again. Who do they have? Ted Williams. That still pisses me off. That the game just randomly cut in. Uh, and then I didn't get in. Oh well. I'm sure I'll get over it. No, I won't. 
Schwartz is getting better. Chuck Deering is getting better. Buddy Lockman is getting better. Jetty Bitta. Uh, Walter Hardy is getting better. Bob Usher is getting better. Hank Sauer is getting better. I feel like Hank Sauer is probably too good to be playing in the minor leagues. But I'm not going to bench any of my existing outfielders for him either. Like, I guess I could just cut Bob Johnson and call up Hank Sauer. I guess that's a reasonable decision to make. And it gets us another power bat off the bench. Yeah, I've talked myself into it. Sorry, Bob. Your time is up. My time is now. I'm fine with Pat Siri playing left field every once in a while. I think that's reasonable. There we go. This is good. I like Hank Sauer being a quality pinch hitter. I think that makes him very useful to us. But yeah, Bob Johnson has been such a valuable piece to this team, and his time is, is concluded. Uh, I'm sure maybe somebody else will sign him. Probably not. Johnny Pesky and Stan Spence. Honestly, I don't know who else I would even want to be on the All-Star team this year, so I will accept it. Good old Hank Greenberg. I mean, do we have anybody else that's all been even been all that great this year? Like, is anyone actually getting snubbed? Not really. Like, in some years, Vern Stevens might have made it. Pat, Siri, start hitting the fucking ball, please. Immediately. I kind of knew this is the I knew this is always going to be a possibility that Pat Siri, for whatever reason, would just struggle to make contact regularly and therefore not be as productive as he might want. I'm not going to do anything about it right now, but this was his chance to show that he belonged in the major leagues, and he's so far not not earning that opportunity. I will bat Vic Wirtz ahead of him. Maybe just putting Siri lower in the lineup will help him out. Who knows? Vern Stevens is doing well. This year it's about him staying healthy. Even if he's not quite as good as he was in 1944, I just want him healthy. That is my objective for him this year. And Stan Spence is, fra is frankly terrifying at this point, that he's just this bloody good at baseball. He's so good. Such a good baseballer. I don't think any of my pitches have been all that special this year. Dizzy Trout might be the one exception. Hmm. Let us advance to the trading deadline. I don't even know what I want, though. I guess, like, a quality first baseman would be a pretty nice addition. Uh, Hitchcock has done a really good job developing young hitters. I see very little upside to letting him go now. Like we've consistently been one of the better hitting teams in the league under his genius tutelage. Apparently, Whitey Lockman doesn't like him, which is interesting. Maybe if he hit better, he'd like you better. I'm just saying. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hand him a new contract. 8790 dollars The highest played coach on the team other than me. Which, since I'm doing two jobs, I deserve. I was trying to think of somebody that was actually a general manager and the manager on the field in baseball, because it's not something that happened very often. I would say the name that pops to mind is Connie Mack, who is also the owner. 
Attack Houston is a really good pitcher. I am not giving up Pat Siri or Carl Sawatsky for him. But he's a really good pitcher. Like, holy shit, he's a good pitcher. I don't think I can do it, though. I don't think I can do that. I do think upgrading the rotation would probably pay the most dividends. Overall, but... The thing is, I don't want to give up anything expensive. I don't want to give up any young prospect to chase a maybe. Because it's all I'm chasing this year. I don't really have a genuine chance at actually getting to the postseason this year. Short of something pretty miraculous. Like, we're already 11 games out of first place. The A's are just too fucking good this year. Mostly because of Ted Williams, who they got for free, I remind you once again. But also their pitching's been really, really good. And I just don't think this is the year to cash in a bunch of chips to go all in. I will start the day, and if the right offer comes along, I'll consider it. Uh, you will give me Cal McLish. Meh. Ralph Higby. Meh. I'm not giving up Sawatsky. I refuse. Sawatsky got a chance to be a pretty damn good player, and I'm not going to give up on that. Oh, you got Texas and Cleveland did. Interesting. Uh, I will discuss this trade with you, but I will not give you Sawatsky. Fuck you. That is my response to you. Uh, I shall ignore that for now. Mm, Aaron Robinson's not bad. He's expensive, though. And I don't know that I want to trade for him. I'd happily trade for Dixie Walker, but once again, you're going to tell me that you don't want to. Yeah. I don't know why you keep putting him on the trading deadlock, trading block, because he'll just never accept a trade. He's like, no, fuck you. I don't want to be traded, which is his right as a baseball player. There is nobody good in the trade market. Nobody even a little bit interesting, in my opinion. I shall simulate to the next sim. I'm just going to reject that trade. Like, it's not that valuable to me. Yeah, and then that's that. Uh... I will happily sign Clyde McNeil. Easily. Don't like it. Uh, Kent Peterson. Oh, is with Philip. I guess I can just sign to other people's players, can I? Cool if I could. The Washington Senators. And we'll just finish today. Yeah, I just... I don't see the value in really pushing because I don't think we're there yet. I think we need some of our young players to really build on their successes um, before we even consider something like that. I just don't think it helps us. I just, I, I don't think we're there. I could use Pat Siri being a competent hitter. That would be lovely. Because Pat Siri can do things other players just can't, he's going to keep getting chances. But I really need him to open up. I really need him to just start raking baseballs into orbit. 
That would be lovely if you could do that for me. Jocelyn's improving quite nicely. As is Vic Wirtz. As is Alex Kel Kellner. Siri, are you even no, you're you're getting worse. Oh my god. You are actually terrible. You can't hit the ball. You cannot put the ball in play often enough, which is really, really bad. Someone else needs to take over first base. And it might even be Vita. Eh, Vita's nothing to write home about either. I feel like I keep giving Sid Gordon chances, but I also know that, like, He's crushing it in the minors. Pat, go to the minors. No, you don't have to go to the minors, but Sid Gordon will be taking your job at first base. He has to. I have to get something from first base if we're going to be even remotely competitive. And then we can figure out what to do with you later on. Sid Gordon. And then I'm going to remove the requirement for you to start first base. I'm just going to make you into a, um, a what you call it, a bench guy. I actually don't mind Hank Sauer getting a few more at-bats. I think that's a fair thing to ask. I think Siri to not play every day. Um, I think he is badly struggling and until you can start hitting for contact i think we're in a lot of trouble every even giving him a shot i just don't think he'll make solid contact uh, which is a tragedy because i think he actually has a chance to be a pretty solid contributor if you could just put the ball in play more frequently 17 to 13 what a game that must have been to watch The AL is tough as shit. Um, much tougher than the National League in my opinion. Actually, no, both leagues are actually pretty tough. Um, I think there's a lot of raw parity and, and talent. And if the fucking Tigers hadn't just given Ted Williams away, you know, I think we might have seen a bit more of a chance for other teams to be successful. Really? I'm not even going to put anybody on the roster to replace him because we only have a handful of games left. Somebody else can get a, an extra start. We finished in almost exactly the same position as last year. We just didn't win quite as many games because Whitey Lockman was not an MVP candidate. Um, I don't even care who wins the World Series this year. Oh, it's the Giants. Fuck the A's for their chicanery. It's Detroit's fault. It's not Philadelphia's fault. Well, Ralph Rocket comes back at the end of the season. That's nice for him. I do think Broncos got a pretty bright future. A pretty bright future for us. I just think our I just think our pitching staff is still way too old, and it gives me a lot of concerns about their durability. Uh, Johnny Pesky finished third in hitting. That's pretty good. Fucking A's.
Kurt Ruffing is going to retire. I wonder if Bob Johnson is going to retire. <sighs> Fucking A's. Stan Smith was almost as good as Ted Williams, so I think we can't let my disappointment of how, how the season progressed or overshadow that. Because he was amazing. He was absolutely positively amazing. Um, yeah, he's a real good one. I wish Pat Siri could just gain a little bit of contact. I think he could be a potential all star. But he's got to put the bat on the ball. His raw power is going to send the ball a long way if he can make contact consistently. If he hits even 250, I think he has the potential to hit 40 home runs. But he needs to, you know, hit. So... He's very fine score is nice, but I wonder what happened to Bob Johnson. I wonder if he picked up with one of the Indy League teams. Bob Johnson. Huh. He ended up pitching for the Yankees for some reason. I don't know why you want him to pitch at the age of 40 when he's not very good at it, but... Hey, what the fuck do I know? Maybe the Yankees know something I don't. Um... Let's look at how the team went. Let's focus on the positive first of all. Stan Spence had an incredible season. Stan Spence has been one of the best players in the majors for several years now. But he took it to another level. He's not there yet. He's not even close to there yet. But he is going to be in the conversation for the Hall of Fame. That's how incredible he's been. Um, Johnny Pesky has been, what a wild career he has had. Truly, truly wild. He's gone from decent to good to amazing to really good to completely terrible and beyond salvaging to injured to amazing again. He has had himself quite a career already, but I am over the moon with his performance. Lots of average, gets on base a ton, doesn't have a lot of power, but it's not something he has to have a lot of. And oh, by the way, he's a reasonably competent second baseman. Not elite, but reasonably competent. Vern Stevens just continues to put in workmanlike performances. I wish he was a little bit better. But his offensive performance isn't that far off of 1944. Um, his defense is acceptable, but not amazing. Dick Culler has been fantastic this year. Really, really good. Gets on base really well. Plays shortstop with some level of skill. Our defense wasn't very good this year. That may be something we have to fix next year. Woody Lockman definitely came down quite a bit. I can live with this version of Woody Lockman, but I would rather have last season's. 
than this season's. I need to be hitting the ball consistently and getting on base. He needs to basically be a prototypical leadoff man. He also wasn't a very good outfielder either, which is kind of yikes. Buddy Rosar had a pretty decent bounce back season. I just had to give him a little bit more rope. And Vic Wirtz, he could be the guy that I hoped that through. But again, not hitting for much power. Power is meant to be one of his calling cards. And he's playing in a park that's actually fairly conducive to hitting home runs. Just for whatever reason, neither he nor Siri can figure it out yet. That said, he's still young. Um, I am willing to give him plenty of chances to show that he can play effectively. Uh, Pat Siri was awful. I don't know how to help you, my guy. I don't know how to help you. You may not be able to be helped. This may be as good a time as any to trade you while you still have some value and see if somebody will give me something useful for you. Because, yikes. Pitching, we got three good seasons out of Trout, Paso, and Potter. John Leftwich came around and had a pretty decent season as well. Um, Sheldon Jones was awful, which isn't as exciting. But once I have him, I can send him to the minors now, so that'll be useful. Maybe we can salvage him a bit. How did Ken Chase do? Ken Chase was okay. How do you have a negative walk percentage? Oh, it's strikeouts minus walks. So yes, um, our guys enjoy walking people, which is not great. I guess what's going to hold Ken Chase back from being a great reliever is the fact he just walks too many hitters. But maybe he ends up going back to the rotation. We actually get a decent season out of him. Who knows? Um, let's also not forget the fallen preacher, Roe, who also turned into a very good season. Um, that is it for today's episode. Um, do remember to like the video if you haven't already. Please consider subscribing. Uh, if you want to see more baseball, um, probably sometime soonish, I'm going to have a new Wednesday video. It just won't be this Wednesday. Um, but I really want to do a video on a route. Um, and then maybe play Victoria 3 in the next couple of, in the next couple of months. Ooh. Pardon me. But that is it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, this has been Ed Guardian, and I bid you good day.